Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, my name is Kelly. <clears throat> and it is my joy and privilege to lead you in a time of singing tonight. I'm really glad to see all of you here, dedicating time to read the Lord's Word. Um, let's bow our heads and pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this privilege that we can have to dedicate time to study your word like this at Family Camp. We want to thank you especially for speaking to us and guiding us and perhaps rebuking us all out of love for us. We pray, Lord, that even as we sing praises to you tonight, may your name truly be glorified. We pray asking all this in your precious son's name. Amen. Um, so just to give you a bit of background <clears throat> on myself, I was born in Perth, but I grew up on Christmas Island. So um, I didn't move here until I was 13 years old, and my Bethel, camp, Bethel family camp journey didn't start until 2006, which basically meant that I had the privilege of attending one of the first ever family camps held in this church premises. Um, and, you know, when I was younger, I really enjoyed coming to family camp. I enjoyed coming to sleep over. I enjoyed waking up with my friends. I enjoyed, you know, all the, all the things that we got to do together. Even if it was cleaning the toilets. It was fun because everyone was all together. But as I got older into my teenage years, I had to be forced, similarly, like Hannah, um, to come to church, to come to camps, and I was, I would, I, yeah, I would use the word forced by my mom. Thanks, mom, for doing that. Um, and it was a really difficult uh, thing to get me to want to come. And if I was there, you know, I would have an attitude. But, you know, it was through camp, a camp ministry where I had discovered that how much I needed the light of the Lord in my life. You know, I'm really, really thankful for this ministry of Family Camp. And the first song I want to share tonight is a song of thanksgiving. And this song, this song sings of thanks to the Lord, our Redeemer. You know, for me, through Family Camp, I was able to learn how to read the Lord's Word. We can learn with a focus on the Lord's Word. And we can even dedicate time to think through, ask questions, and reflect on the Word of God. You know, through family camp, the pastors, they expounded the Word of God. They even helped us ask hard questions that we dare not ask ourselves. And through camp, we learn firsthand, from firsthand experience, what it means to be a family of God to see um, people care for each other, for example, the cooks that care for us each and every day, to see how people would look out for each other and how we can serve alongside, alongside each other as well. And for me this year, I am really thankful to be able to take leave because I know it's not very easy, for, for, not easy for many to take leave, to carve out time to come for camp full time. But I am thankful for every opportunity there is to learn and to check my faith again. Because this is a very top priority. It is something that um, I need to plan. You know, at work, in our work calendar, <laughs> at the beginning of every year, the first thing our office admin does is input all the holidays <laughs> of the year so that everyone knows when the holidays are when to book in time for a long weekend or leave. And that's what I plan to do because every opportunity counts for camp. And, you know, I thank God for the privilege that we can learn so freely from his word. And last but not least, I'm thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so far at camp, we are on the second last night now. There have been many... Um, great and challenging lessons learned, um, some of them harder um, 
to admit to than others. Um, and, you know, I see the Lord Jesus and his great grace and mercy because he does not wish to condemn us, but, and, and his light is not meant to be con a condemnation towards us, but is to help us see how much we need him in our life. You know, he wants to lovingly and patiently redeem us or restore us back to himself if we would let him. So the first song I want to invite you to sing tonight is this song, Thanks to God for My Redeemer, taken from the VIP. Um, and I would like to invite Gloria and Elijah to help support sing as well. Let's take up this song together. Thanks to God for my Redeemer, thanks for all Thou dost provide. Thanks for times of utter memory, thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for pleasant, cheerful springtime, thanks for summer, winter, fall. What is my not forgotten? There's a peace within my soul. Thanks for prayers that thou hast answered. Thanks for what thou dost provide. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for homes and thanks for foresight. Thanks for hope, that sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heavenly peace within. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks for all eternity. know, as I listen to the camp messages throughout the week, um, I have come to the realization that camp, coming to camp is not just a want, but a need. And this is so evident in the messages that we've been hearing. It has been 13 years since I've um, been baptized, and there can be a danger of becoming complacent. Believing you are a true Christian or disciple of the Lord Jesus <clears throat> the Word of God always comes in a very timely manner, and I have found this to be true this camp. I have received, as if um, direct word from the Lord, that I need to recenter my life around Him. It is not enough to profess faith, but can I truly see this, these things in every aspect of my life? Discernment clear decision, depth, a dynamic faith, and a determination to do his will. On the very first night, Pastor Charlie asked an um, array of very important questions, some of them being, what do I believe in? Am I connected to Jesus? Is Jesus my center? Do I have concrete changes in my life? Amongst um, these important questions, one impacted me the most. Um, this came as Pastor Charlie shared about the incident that happened with Uncle Terence at Bethany Family Camp in Malaysia. And Pastor asked, how would you pray? <clears throat> and this question really shook me.
just to share with you all, this past week, I had received some bad news regarding my health. Um, some of you may know that um, I have been through two major surgeries already in my life. I'm still very young, not that old. <laughs> and I may potentially have to go through another major surgery that would impact my future. And upon hearing this news, I really struggled in, in that moment. So when pastor asked this question, how would you pray? The first thoughts that came to my mind was, why did I struggle so much when I heard this news? How do I know, how do I not know how to pray? Even though I've been calling myself a true believer these 13 years, and if I cannot even pray for myself, how would I even pray for those I loved regarding their life? You know, knowing if I am a true disciple of the Lord Jesus is crucial because faith is crucial in every aspect of life. When I was younger, I didn't ever think anything would happen to me as everybody probably has been through in their childhood, you think that you're invincible, that nothing would happen to you. But when the storms come, how would my faith stand up? And I asked myself, would I be like Peter and remain with the Lord Jesus when it, do when it does come? You know, the Lord meant for us to live a so much stronger and a, a life filled with so much more strength and power. So I want to invite you to sing this second song before the message, Seekers of Your Heart. And this song is a reminder and a response to recenter my life around Christ, to give him first place, to determine to know the Lord Jesus with even greater depth, to determine to live as a true disciple of the Lord was meant to live. And um, I hope that this would be your prayer too. So let's rise together and sing this before the message. Yeah. 
Seated. I'll pass this time to Pastor Charlie. Well, thank you um, for sharing that candidly, um, Kelly. Uh, I don't know what you are going to go through, but some of us have gone through a lot of operations. <laughs> um, and we know we come out stronger we come out wiser, we come out better. So that's something that you want to look forward to. Right? So no matter what, I have new respect. If I have gastroenteritis, then I know that the Lord is using that to cleanse me somewhere, somehow. So look at it very positively. Sure, it's a lot of pain here and there. Um, one of the ways in which I know in the hospital, I always look for that moment when I see, hear, feel something funny. And when I can laugh, then I know I'm getting better. That, that's how I cope with a lot of these things here. They just want to, so I, I, don't, I don't take this, this uh, thing, um, you know, I, I, they're not going to get me down. That I, that's, that's the important. So look for that light. Lord, what is it you're trying to show me? Uh, light. Right? Now, this is very important. And then it's the bread of life. And that's where you find the strength from the bread of life. Light, combine them together. That's the important. You need to see how they are interconnected. And tonight, we're going to combine two more. The idea of door and then the idea of shepherd. But tonight, I'm going to read with you John 10 and try to help you understand this message a little bit differently. Right? We're well, going to try and see whether you, uh, whether you will be able to, to do that. And I, I hope that you can and uh, you will be the better because of it. We, all, we often think, so people look at it and they, they always say, I am a believer. I, I believe in the Lord. Right? I, I still remember the young man that I was speaking to way back in those early years when I was used to go to Sarawak. And there was this young man who came to me and he said, Okay, Pastor, I want to tell you something. One, I'm a son of a church elder, a church leader. Okay? Two, I know all the songs by heart. Three, I memorized Bible verses. Right? And I listen to your message and I ask myself, am I really a Christian? He says, I am not a disciple. I'm not really interested in anything beyond I go to church. So um, I explain the gospel to him and we talked until about 10.30 at night. Then he went. He was, a, he was a, they call it the Batulintang Teachers College. So he was training to be a school teacher. And then at 3 a.m. in the morning, he started singing. What? So, he, so all his friends thought maybe the pressure of studying cracked him. Because he was singing, he, he couldn't help himself. Suddenly, he's alive. Right? And, and uh, you know, I, I have a nickname for him. I, because his face is so long, I call him horse face. <laughs> his face, really long, not happy at all. That night, 3 a.m. in the morning, his life changed. 6.30 in the morning, he came to where I was staying. He says, I brought for six friends, or oh, we all want to talk to you. We want to know whether we are saved. And so it was a time of sharing with them, how do you know you are saved? 
right? You talk to people about light, and they say, okay, I think I understand you. But they really don't. You talk about bread of life, yeah, okay, I, I like bread. But seriously, how do we know that we are believers? So that week was a week of sharing the gospel. He says, Pastor, for the first time I can smile. Last time there was nothing to smile about. But now the joy is so real, all my friends want to ask me, how did you learn how to smile like that? It's natural, it's vibrant, it is, you know, it's catching. And we want whatever infection you have. <laughs> Tell us how you can find that joy. So that week, was leading people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every night, it was leading this person, that person to the Lord. And it was just a wonderful time of evangelism. Uh, I used to do a lot of evangelistic work, you know, in the early days. And that's just absolutely full of joy. Tonight, we're going to take up this whole idea. Let's check ourselves. How do we know that we are actually saved? How do we know? So I'm going to share with you how you can know, right? Let's look at uh, John chapter 10 tonight. Right, so you turn to the Bible. I'm not going to turn other texts, just John 10, so that you can follow along the way. And then you ask yourself what you are looking for. Now, John 10 is special to me, to my heart, in more ways than one. Ever since two years ago, when the little cat came into my life, I have learned a lot of lessons about being a shepherd to a cat. <laughs> now, you, you don't realize, how can shepherd to a cat? Watch and see. I, I will share with you how this actually works out. Right? I apply it into my life, and I'll tell you how it works out. And it is has been a wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, let's look at John 10, for, for example. And so he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them. Now, that is 10 and verse 3. Okay, now I need to explain this a little bit to you. Right? Now, this is called a paramian. Uh, literally, they, they, all right, we call it translated verse 6, an illustration. So the Lord Jesus was going to use an illustration of sheep and sheepfold, sheep and shepherd to explain. Right? Now, usually from one pasture to another pasture to another pasture, it could be 10 kilometers away. Right? So along the way from here to A to B, there are little what we call public sheepfolds. Because it's too long a journey for the sheep to go in one, one day or two days. So what they do is that the shepherd will tell the sheep. Now, if you are not a, you're not a shepherd, you wouldn't understand. Now, the, the sheep pen, all sheep look alike, right? How are you going to tell one sheep from another? Okay, uh, and you say to the person there, I am bringing 20 sheep. Right? They don't have tax, you know. 20 sheep, no tax. I'm going to let them in. There are already 30, tax, 30 sheep there. All no, no tax. Right? Okay. Um, I pay you this amount of money. You look after my sheep for me. Okay, I'm going to go here. From here to, to the next pasture. How am I going to call How am I going to call them? How are we going to distinguish them? All right. Uh, if the one has a broken leg, very easy to tell. If the one has an ear that is funny, you can tell. But if they're all normal sheep, they are there. How can you know? 
See, you say you go to a church, everybody dressed nicely, carry Bible, can sing songs. Who is a true believer? Can you tell? God cannot tell. Seriously cannot tell. How are you going to tell? Right? So this is how the Lord Jesus teaches them. He gives an illustration. Look, very important. All right, so watch this very carefully. So he is the true shepherd. He comes in through the door, and then he said to him, uh, the doorkeeper opens, and then the sheep hear his voice. One. Two, he calls his own by name. Three, he leads them out. Three things. All right? So you ask yourself, how does the shepherd know one sheep from another? Now, this is important. So the question is, how do you know? So there are three things to look for. What? Okay. So look at 10 and verse 3, and you see tonight, and let's check ourselves. 10 and verse 3. Okay. One, the sheep hear his voice. Right? I'll tell you this. Uh, my cat is downstairs. I want to call him. Right? I, I don't call him by his name. I call him, I call him Sweetie. The moment he hears my voice, he comes up immediately. See? Now, you've been listening to the, the Lord's teaching about light, about bread. You hear? This is the Lord's voice, obviously. You're going to prepare for surgery. Do you hear what the Lord is saying to you? One of the telltale signs that you are truly a believer is you can hear the Master's voice. And a lot of people can't hear. Question, are you sure you are sheep? This is important. Hear my voice. If whatever he's doing, I call him, he will come. All right? Now, watch this. Verse 3 again. It looks very carefully. Right? And he calls them by name. Right? Now, of course, he has a name. His name registered is Sugar Tan. So you go to the vet. You look at his name, and the tan sugar tan, that is his name. And you don't say, I don't call him by his own personal name. I have pet names for him, and he hears my voice. But I know him by name. Someone showed me a photograph, and a white cat, um, what is this sugar? And I said, No. And I'll tell you what, you really know your cat, of course. I know his ears are pointed in a certain way. I know his face. I study his face all, absolutely. He know his name. The word name is not just give him a, the, a name. It's not. There is a voice and a name relationship. Right? Now, the moment I call him, I can call him sweetie and he will come. Because he hears the voice, not the name. See? So the voice and the name are related. Now watch this very carefully in verse 3. And he says, and he leads them out. Okay? He will lead them out. Will he lead? Now, I learned this lesson and I apply this. Okay? Let's go out. And every evening, when the sun has gone down, it's not so hot. This little boy wants to go out to the garden. And, and he is very careful. He is the best predator I have. Just last week, in fact, he was out there. I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. But he saw it. He, he heard it. And he went there, rushed. And he caught a lizard this long. It's a garden lizard. I would be a bit scared of it. But he's not. So he grabs it. He doesn't kill it. He just grabs it. And he brings it to the house. 
sort of, this is home. I've caught something here. He, he is there. You see, the key word I'm trying to say here tonight is one word. Can you relate to the shepherd? Because this is what a shepherd and a sheep has. They have a relationship. You see, a lot of people call themselves believers, but they have no relationship with the Lord at all. When you eat bread, the bread is not external. It becomes a part of you. It's inside you now. Can you see this? When you have light, it's not a torchlight from the outside. Life and light go together. It's inside you right now. This is what the Lord wants you to have. But it is actually what we call a relationship thing. And if there is no relationship, big question, is there a real faith situation? Right? People read the Bible blank. Hear the message blank. For years blank. Question, is this faith real? Please do not quote Bible verses to me and say, you know, if I confess with my mouth, uh, the Lord Jesus is, is, is my Savior, therefore you are saved. You have no idea how many people are fooled by things like that. This is how the Lord tells him. What is the relationship? He is shepherd, sheep. See? He is master, teacher, disciple. Same. Relate. If we don't know how to relate to the Lord, question, are we sheep? Two, are we disciples? And if we are not, big question, are we really saved? I'm not asking, are you baptized? I'm not asking, are you a church attendee? I'm asking, if you were to use these three criteria, can you hear the master's voice? I tell you, every single pet, every single, anything, your dog, cat, you name it, there is always a relationship, the master and the animal, the pet, always. If there isn't, there is something seriously wrong with that relationship. Right? Now, my little boy, I always call him my little boy. Right? He will come to me and if he wants me, he, he wants me a bit of attention, he will sit on my desk. He will sit right between my, my TV, my, my monitor, and my thing, and I can't do a thing. He just sits there and he looks at me. Relationship. So I learned so much about relationship as I learned to care for little sugar. Right? Now, we go on further and we'll see how this is, works out. And then in verse um, 7, most assuredly, the Lord Jesus said, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, he's out of the sheepfold, all right? So, this is the, where the journey begins. All right? So, the journey begins here. So, this is a public sheepfold. All right? The sheep are all over the place, and they are there. And the Lord leads them. How does he lead them? He calls them the shepherd knows everyone by name. Now, if you have, you have a lot of sheep here, you go to the sheep, you can't tell one from the other. Except this one fat, this one a bit skinny, uh, this one a bit scruffy. You don't know them. Right? You really don't know them. But this is what it is. So he knows everyone by name. And so he leads out. So this is where the journey begins. Now, life is that journey. We have a shepherd leading us. We are sheep. We listen to the voice. He calls us by name. He leads. We respond. Right? So now he comes to the open field. Sometimes the open field 
is there. Okay, you feed the whole day. But comes the night. The sheep cannot be left out in the open. There are wolves. There are other wild creatures. And they will attack them. And they will be killed. So this is a place. So what the shepherd does is he will look for a cave. And he will put his 20 sheep inside. And so what he does is he finds a cave and then there's an opening. He checks it out. There are no bears there. There are no lions there. There are no wolves there. There's nothing there. Save would step in. And then, there we go. And this is where he sits. That's why he says, I am the door. Right? He will, they will come, go, come in and go out. What does that mean? See, this is how that relationship works. The Lord will always be the leader. Right? Now we talk about black sheep. I'm not talking about the Baba black sheep one. I'm talking about the real black sheep that goes astray. They're not following. They're not interested. Right? So this is a relationship that is developed. And he says, I am the door of the sheep. Now watch this very carefully. 10 and verse 7. Okay? And then he says, go on further. In verse uh, 9. If anyone enters by me. Right? So this is the entrance. He enters by me. He will be saved. You see, the problem is that we don't go through the Lord Jesus. And we think, oh, if I attend church, I'm saved. No, you're not. If I sing songs, I'm saved. If I read Bible, I'm saved. I say I'm a Christian for many years, I'm saved. No, it doesn't work like that. You've got to go through the door, the Lord Jesus. If you don't go through the Lord Jesus, you are not saved. Doesn't matter who you are. Age has nothing to do with salvation. A family relationship has nothing to do with salvation. This is salvation. You must go in through the Lord Jesus Christ. 10, 9. Now, you have to check. Now. Did you really go through the Lord Jesus? Have you entered into that open sheepfold? Remember, it's a journey. Right? So let's look at it very carefully. 10, 9. And then we go on further. And then here the Lord says, I have come that they may have life. Yeah? Remember? The first one, we talk about life. Bread of life. I have come that they may have life. Now, go on further. Not only He wants to give life, Two, that they may have it abundantly. That is a healthy relationship. Now, you ask yourself, can you describe your life as abundant? This is not the same as having abundance. Right? It is really the life that is really wonderfully enriched. This is the Christian life that we were meant to have. And he will go in and out. What does it mean? It means that you are following the Lord's leading. He will lead you out. He will lead you in. Life is a journey. And he is going to be there leading every single step of the way. Now, if you were a shepherd, you hear this. What's your response as sheep? The sheep hears his voice. My name is called. I am going to follow. All right, so he's taking me to the next journey. From here, another journey. All the time, he will be the door. You can be very safe and secure. The Lord is going to be the door. Uh, that is wonderful. That's something that we cannot but really, really thank God for, for this truth. Now, let's go on further. Okay? Now, this is very important. I am 
the door here. Okay, now this is important. From there, he talks about this and life abundantly. The next movement is I am the good shepherd. Watch this very carefully now because they are related. That is the door part of it. And then there is the shepherd part of it. And we're going to see how very closely related these things are. Okay, one. Shepherd is the whole idea. He says, I know my sheep. They know my voice. I call them. I lead them and they follow. This is going to be repeated again and again and again in John 10. This is true salvation. This is true relationship. So if a person says, I'm a believer, does not relate to the Lord, let me tell you, you may not be a sheep, you may be a goat. Now, this is important. Right. Can this happen? Well, let's watch very carefully. So 10, okay, in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd, twice now. Okay, and he says, I know my sheep and am known by my own. Two things. The shepherd obviously knows the sheep. Right? We, we, of course, we know our cat. Every aspect of his life, we know. Right? Obviously, we know what he likes, what he doesn't like. We know he's scared of thunder. We know that he doesn't like certain things. He will sniff it and he will not touch it. We know a shepherd will always know the sheep. The problem is not the shepherd. The problem is, does the sheep know the shepherd? You cannot have one-sided. It has to be the other side. The sheep must know the shepherd. Right? Now, this is what we are looking at in 10 and verse 14. I know my sheep and am known by my own. Now, this is important. And then the illustration. All right? The illustration is the very next verse, verse 15. As the Father knows me, I know the Father. That is the kind of knowledge we have. That is a closeness. Right? So, okay, uh, the cat, the, you know, you can feed the cat, no problem. No, there are lots of cats around our, our estate. Right? But most of the cats out there, those, those stray cats, they will never come close. As in, never. Right? But this little sugar, he will always be close. That's how you know. So every morning, he will get up in the morning, he will come to me, and then he will sit down, and I always make sure he's got good manners. Right? Uh, so, first word, sit down, and he will sit down. Next, nose kiss, all the time. And he will come, nose kiss, and then I will feed him. I hand feed him. Closeness. And he knows. He knows when I stop. I talk to him along the way. I don't think he understands what he, I'm talking about. His vocabulary is very limited. That is not vocabulary. It's that he knows, he senses, he understands, he relates, and he is there, and he knows. That's a wonderful thing. Right? I'm told that when he goes to the grandchildren's room, he will jump into the bed and disturb them. With me, he doesn't. He will wait quietly until I get up. He won't jump. He will just stay there. And then if he really wants me to wake up, he will very gently meow. He never jumps onto the bed, even once. He knows. I know 
the cap notes in return. This is relationship. This is closeness. How do they know? How does a sheep know the shepherd? It's not vocabulary. It's a, a relationship is an instinct. A relationship is learned and it becomes a part of you. That is what we are looking at. So when the Lord says, He is the good shepherd, He is the door, this is what He means. Right? I know my sheep. You know what? This is what He, he goes on further. As my Father knows me, I know the Father. And then He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Oh, that is amazing. What would I do for my little cat? Anything and everything. Right? He goes for grooming. He's grooming more costly than my haircut. Will I spend it? Of course. No question about it. The little treats I, I guess we, we spend with him. Expensive food. Why? Won't think twice about it. Right? Why? Because of a relationship. I lay down my life, the Lord says, for my sheep. This is how precious we are to him. He will lay down his life. If the person is a hireling, a hired hand, see the wolf coming, he runs. Now watch. You see, the little cat, now he knows that he is loved, he is provided for, he is protected. He returns it. Every evening, there will be people who walk their dogs. Some of them are big dogs. Some of them are huskies, right? And they will come and sniff the cat out. And they will try to get in. And he will always be there. He's absolutely not afraid of the bigger dogs. Some of the dogs are three times his size. Not afraid. He's there. So the moves on the other side, he will also move there and say, this is my territory. You're not coming in. This is how the shepherd-sheep relationship builds. It takes time to build a relationship. It's an everyday eating, every time we are there, right? So when I had to come over to Perth, I said goodbye to him, and he put his paw on my hand. This is a way of saying, uh, expressing affection. That's how it is. So it's not just a nose kiss, it's also there. And sometimes two hands or two paws in front, and he will actually relate. This is relationship. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, and the sheep does not relate. That is not sheep. That is not the Lord's sheep. They are sheep that belong to other people, but not the Lord's. I know my sheep. Obviously, I know my sheep. Why? Look at them. Look at what it is. The sheep knows the master has risked his life, will lay down his life. How does a sheep know? The sheep knows. Relationship, knowledge. It's not cognitive knowledge. It's an instinctive knowledge. It's there. No mistaking it. Right? And that is what we are reading in John 10. So the question is, is there a relationship? Right? Think about this. Is there a relationship going? And this is something that we want to look at very carefully. Okay. And he says, um, let's go on further. They hear my voice. Now, this is important. In verse 17, he says, I lay down my life. All right, now we go on further, move on down, and then we read verse, can you see this? Verse 25, the Lord Jesus answered them. They keep on blaming the Lord. How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Not that the Lord has not told them. He said, I told you. Problem, you do not believe. 
They are Jews, yes. They know the scriptures, yes. They do go synagogue worship every Saturday, yes. They go to the temple often, yes. They perform all kinds of religious uh, functions, yes. Problem. The Lord said, you do not believe me. Twice he said that. You see, belief is not something you understand. It's a relationship. It's called a faith relationship. So there is a knowledge relationship. There is a faith relationship. There is a love relationship. This is what the Lord is talking about. Right? It's very hard to have a love relationship with light. It's not there. It's very hard to have a relationship with bread. Or some people can. But shepherd and sheep, unmistakable. Right? You see the whole idea? And there is a strong faith, knowledge, love relationship going on. And it starts with believing. You do not believe. And I'll tell you why. Because you are not my sheep. You see? So you can tell. The person can be attending church. The person can be there, can be talking, be a friend. The person is a friend, but not a believer. The person, the Lord says, I tell you very frankly, you are not my sheep. It's as plain as you can get. So the question, question tonight we must raise for ourselves is, are we the sheep of the Lord? Right? One, is there a relationship with the shepherd? Two, is there a knowledge? My shepherd, the, sh the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. There is a knowledge relationship. Right? There is a faith relationship. There is a love relationship with the shepherd too, which is very, very beautiful, and you want to take note of this. And the Lord repeats, and He says in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. That's what we said earlier, right? The beginning journey, my sheep hear my voice, let's go out, find pasture. We'll go in and out. You will find pasture. And I will feed you well. You can eat and you can have abundance. No ration, just go ahead, partake of whatever you need to have life abundant. The Lord provides. And then stop. Let's go to the sheepfold again. And the Lord becomes the door. And then we must move on to the next part of it. Again, goes out, in, out. And then they feed. And there is abundance. Right? That there is life abundant. And then he will call the, the sheep. All right, we must go to the cave now. And they will come. Right? Tonight, rest. Tonight, I will be the door. And the sheep happily settles down. The next morning, he says to the sheep, it's time to go pasture out again. Let's go in, out. And the sheep will follow. How will they follow? Remember, he calls them by name. And they hear his voice. Do you see that relationship that is there? They hear his voice and we read, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. See? Disciple following. So when you have people saying, yes, I believe in the Lord, I'm a baptized member, but they're not following the Lord. Are they sheep? Big question mark. Can you hear the voice of the Lord tonight? As we listen to the Lord's word, as we read John 10, I just want to ask you, can you hear? Kelly, can you hear what the Lord is saying? You're going for surgery. Can you hear? What's the Lord saying? The sheep will hear the master's voice. And guess what? The sheep will follow. Why? The sheep is used to hearing that master's voice. Any other, they will not respond. Cannot, will not. You can tell. Look at, let's look at it further. Right? And this is what the Lord gives to them. One, and I give them eternal life. 
they will never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. That is the promise of the Lord. Can you see the relationship? This is very important. So, whatever it is, you see, there is a relationship. It's always there. Now, you would look at this parent child, same. Right? As a parent, what will I provide? Anything, everything within my means, I will do it. Why? That's it. That love is there. That commitment is there. The dedication is there. It's there. Same shepherd sheep. That relationship must be there. So if there isn't a relationship, then you must ask yourself, what's happening? Well, this is what the, the sheep will hear his voice and they will follow and they are assured they will have eternal life. The Lord will provide abundantly, beginning to end, eternally. God, the Lord, will be providing every single step of the way. That is the shepherd-sheep relationship. Now we go on further. Okay? And now this is important for us to know. As we take a look at these things here, there is protection. And then, of course, um, they, they all are very angry with the Lord for saying all of these things here. Now the question is, what is it that we want to take note of? And they follow me. Right? So what happens if there is someone who is calling them? Will they respond? And the answer is, no, they will not respond. Now, that is something that we need to take a look at. I'm the good shepherd. Okay? And this is important. And uh, they will... Um, they will be there. And this is where we come and take a look at how the Lord compares himself with the hirelings, the hired hands. They're not interested. That's how you know. That's how you know a true shepherd, a good shepherd from a false one. Right? Now, this is important. What is the motivation? It's not just a job. If the pastor is just doing his job, he won't last very long. If he's got other interests, it's, it's no big deal. Right? What is he like? And the person who follows the Lord, there he will follow exactly. The Lord is called the chief shepherd in 1 Peter 5. In Hebrews 13, he's called the great shepherd of the sheep. And it's there all the way through. But the important thing is not to describe so much tonight about the Lord Jesus. We will discover lots of things. My basic concern is, do you know how to relate? Now you ask yourself, how is it that so many believers do not know how to relate? That's very obvious, right? So part of what the Lord is trying to do is to always... Now, so He allows them to look at these things here, right? Now, this is important. There is a journey. This is very important. And life is a journey, right? Sometimes open field. Sometimes a sheepfold. Sometimes a cave where he is the door, right? This is the common thing. This is what we, he will go in and out. From outside, he will come in pasture. Okay, uh, over here, this is going to be a public sheepfold. And it goes out again, and this is an open cave out there. So, one, two, three. If the sheep does not know how to lead, that's how it is. I was reading a beautiful story of how, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. And we say, I shall not want. You see, the sheep respond, I'm not in want. What does he do? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. What does he do? He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, darkness, I will fear no evil. How does sheep know? when you are in a dark valley. And so I read a story of how 
A person is a shepherd. Remember, the shepherd has got sticks. So in the dark valley, where the sheep cannot see the shepherd, how would the sheep know how to follow? One, the shepherd always talks to the sheep. After a while, the sheep listens to the voice of the shepherd. That's what I do. I talk to Sugar every day that I'm in Singapore. Until he's attuned to my voice. He doesn't understand what I'm saying, but he knows I am attuned, he's attuned to my voice. That's what it is. Right? So I need to do this every day. Right? I will find time for him every single day. No matter how busy, I find time for him every day. Do I even pray for him? Yes. Why not? That's how you love him. That is a relationship building thing. It's a bonding through all the journeys. So how is a sheep going to know the shepherd is there? Watch. This is a rod. He is going through a valley. You know what he does? And the sheep hears. The master is there. I follow. There are times you cannot see, you hear, you follow. That's how you hear. All those people out there, I read all kinds of theological journals, all kinds of books, and you recognize this one is not right. How do you know? You know. You hear, you know. You see, you know. You read, you know. It's a part of you. That truth now is so much a part of you. You hear it straight away. You can distinguish very clearly. The sheep knows the voice. Even if the master's voice is silent, the sheep knows how to follow. If you cannot hear the master's voice, you will hear the steps that the master will take as he taps on the ground. And the sheep will follow. This is a beautiful relationship that we are talking about. That's what it should be. You see, many people say, Oh, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. <clears throat> they don't love the Lord. They don't love the Lord at all. Right? Now, this is important. So, one of the things that we try to do very, very hard is to teach our people to learn how to love the Lord. And when they learn how to love the Lord, the giving to the Lord is a natural expression. Every year, we give away to missions work a million dollars. Literally, a million dollars goes out from our church over to support Kenya, Myanmar, India. That's a lot of money to give out. That's over 100,000 a month going out. Really? How are we going to sustain this? You love the Lord. The heart naturally opens. The hand opens. That's what we do. That's what it's all about. We don't solicit funds. We don't have fund drives. We don't have donation drive. We've got none of these things at all. But why would people give? They listen. And they write to me, Pastor, the Lord has been so good to me. You know, I want to give this for the Lord's work. Throughout the whole year, every week we see this thing for 50 years. We hear a master's voice leading. This is relationship. Natural. Okay, I hope you understand this. You see, if we look, if we read this, and as sheep, we read, the Lord laid down his life for me. Am I moved? I am. My funds, they're not mine. I'm going to use this for the Lord's work any way I can, every way I can. Now, 
People thought, why? Well, very painful to give. No, it's not. It's a joy. It's a very real joy. And only those who are sheep can understand that. That's not how it works. Unfortunately for many. Because that relationship is not there. That's why the Lord said, you are not my sheep. Plainly, clearly, I've given you so many works and you ask me, you are finding for. You're trying to take up stones, you want to stone me. That tells you what? You don't know me. They listen, but they are not hearing. They saw the signs and they don't believe. The Lord explains and they reject. All these are signs, indications. They are not His sheep. And that's how it works. And so tonight we must ask ourselves seriously, what's our relationship with the Lord like? I, I'm, I'm not worried about whether I have eternal life or don't. I, I really am not. Really. We don't understand all the eternal life part very much because we cannot understand eternity. But I can understand relationship. Right? My mind wants to know more about the Lord. Automatic, my mind, my heart. My heart wants to learn to love the Lord. I want to hear His voice and a sheep I want to follow. Wherever the journey may be, broad open field or in a narrow cave or in a dark valley, it doesn't matter. And I can say, the Lord is my shepherd. Question, is He really your shepherd? Please, not words. I think all of us are so used to words. Key, ask yourself, can you hear what the Lord said? I know my sheep. What's the Lord's name for you? Do you know? Peter, you are Cephas. James John, you are sons of Boanerges. You are sons of thunder. Thomas, do not doubt. Believe. He knows every disciple of his. Have I not chosen one? And one of you is the devil? He knows everyone. True believers, not true believers. Key word, relationship. And this is something that we all need to ask ourselves. Right? Okay, uh, here is the bread of life. Very hard to understand. That's why they said it's very hard. Okay, uh, I, can, I understand you. You, don't want to, you. you cannot understand. Okay, now I'm going to try again. Okay, I'm the light of the world. Can you see? The light is there. Still cannot. Okay, now I'm going to go something deeper. Shepherd, sheep. Many of them have pets. Many of them would have sheep, they have cattle, they have relationship. Everyone who understands that, you understand relationship. It's not difficult. Right? You can tell very easily. So how do you know? Many, many old, old proverbs are told about, you know, two people claim uh, to, to own the same thing. Right? So one person uh, claimed to be I uh, got an elephant, and the person say, let the elephant out. Okay, it's, it's mine. And so dispute, why did you take my elephant? No, it's not yours, it's mine. So the chieftain says, okay, let's see who it is, whose it is. Very simple. What do you feed the elephant with? How does the elephant feed? How does it eat? Do you know? And if you don't know anything, you're not the owner. The shepherd knows the sheep. He knows when you go astray. He knows when you are in doubt. He knows when you are fearful. He knows. And he calms the sheep down. Listen, hear my voice. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. Hear my voice. Relate. Tonight, this is what I want to ask you to consider very clearly, very carefully. 
Is there a knowledge, understanding relationship between you and God? Do you really want to know God better? And a lot of people know there's nothing there. Really nothing. Second, is there a faith? You do not believe me. That's what the Lord said. Because there was no faith relationship, there was no relationship. And then the third one, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. It doesn't matter how long the journey. doesn't matter if there is a cave. If the shepherd says, go, the sheep follow. So tonight, let me ask you, what is your relationship with the Lord like? Is there a faith relationship? Is there a knowledge relationship? Is there a love relationship? Is there a following relationship? And if we don't follow the Lord, what do we have? We say we are, we are, we are believers. We are there. Really? It may not be as real as you think. And so it was with all the religious leaders we read in John 10. The scribes, these are the scholars. The Pharisees, these are the so-called holy ones, the righteous ones. They don't believe in the Lord at all. So on the outside, they all look good. But on the inside, there was nothing inside them at all. A lot of people just want to look good. But what's your personal relationship like with the Lord? That is the key feature tonight about door and shepherd relationship with the sheep. If somebody will be at the cave protecting me, providing for me, I am going to love this shepherd. If that shepherd will literally fight the wolves for me and lay down his life for me, I will die for him. And the Lord has been good all these years. Right? So somebody, someone wrote to me this afternoon and said, Pastor, I was going to wish you uh, you're having a heavy Easter weekend. Uh, I wish you rest. Then I realized you are here in Perth. So I said, what's the problem? Serving the Lord is the greatest joy ever. Everybody wants to relax. Oh, take it easy, relax, take it easy. Me, I just want to follow the Lord. That to me, the greatest joy. I constantly want to hear what the Master is saying. What is he saying? I listen. Right now, this is very important. I, I um, you know, I, I don't hear so well a lot of times. But when my cat calls me and meows, I hear him. Even when he's not meowing for me here, I still hear him. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm here. Hey, how come the cat is here? No, it's not. I miss him. So I hear him. This is a relationship that has been built and it can be built. And I want to encourage you, build this relationship with the Lord. Not just intellectually, but emotionally, spiritually, and practically. Follow. That is the most wonderful relationship you could ever have in life. And Kelly, the Lord is going to lead you further. You know what? Tell the Lord. Lord, you're my shepherd. If I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know what? I'm not going to fear any evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. This is what it is to relate to the Lord. Let's pray together. Tonight, I just want to tell you how wonderful it is to have the Lord say to us, I know my sheep. The question is, he also said, I am known of mine. I am known by my own. Let me ask you, do you really know the Lord? 
Do you really relate to the Lord? You can be in Sunday school and not know the Lord. You can be part of the choir and not know the Lord. You can be a church attendee for years and not know the Lord. Tonight, open your heart and your mind to the Lord. Hear the voice of the master, of the shepherd saying, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. I lay down my life for the sheep. The Lord loves you. He has protected you, provided for you all your life. Relate to Him. Follow. Listen to that voice. That's the best thing you could do. And may the Lord help us to draw ever closer to Him. As I said, the Lord has allowed me to have this little cat to teach me lessons that I may learn afresh these lessons of how he is shepherd to the sheep. It's something that we need to look at very carefully. Well, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the Lord Jesus as the bread of life, as the light of the world, and now tonight as the door and as a shepherd in a journey of life. Help us to hear his voice. Help us to know what he is saying to us, how he brings comfort, how he brings assurance. Help us to respond with love, with trust, with understanding. Help us to desire to deepen this relationship. We give thanks that we have the Lord Jesus as our shepherd, as the door, as the light, and as the bread of life. We give thanks in this wonderful name of our Saviour, we pray. Amen.